Hey guys, I'm out here in the garage. I'm going to do an oil change on this uh, Bronco. Got a caffeine and octane tomorrow. And it's been out to Moab, done a bunch of other stuff, and it's about time for a quick oil change. See if I can do this uh, without having to stop the video too much. I'm going to put this thing on a tripod for a minute, go over here and set it up and raise it up in the air, do a couple other things with it. It might be boring. I might put it on time lapse if it, uh, if it gets too too boring but yeah I'll go ahead and raise this up see what we can do with it um, get started on it got it out of here so we'll pull it forward and get this position on the left pull short a little bit it's kind of it's a turkey Start getting it set up and we'll bore you with all the details of setting this thing up on the lift. When I get it out there, I'll go ahead and uh, start the video again. You gotta get this short wheelbase vehicle <laughs> on the uh, lift just right because it's a high center of gravity and it's uh, the way it's set up, it's a uh, it's pretty wild, so you got to kind of make sure it's balanced on there properly. I'll be back to you in a minute. All right, we've got a position on the lift. I'm probably going to do some of this and then maybe time lapse it a little bit, see how that works. Again, like you say, I'm still figuring some of this stuff out. I just thought I'd show you this uh, on the lift, and uh, it's kind of interesting. Short wave based vehicle, it picks it up okay. You gotta watch it. You gotta know where to position everything on this thing because you got uh, a short vehicle with a heavy motor in the front, and then you have a uh, four wheel drive. So you have a front differential that also puts weight on the front. I've got a box in the back and a big spare tire, some fuel in the tank, another differential. It tends to balance it out. It's about a 3,500 pound vehicle. So you kind of have to make sure that you got it balanced and uh, we'll see I looked it up some more it's a 9,000 pound lift so the lift isn't a problem it's just the spread of the uh, actual uh, arms on the lift you want to make sure you got a good balance on it It would make an interesting video if this thing fell off. Not be good for me, but good for maybe you guys. Yeah, let me go back and get this little thing here. Hold on.
Probably don't need that, but just in case. Let's see if we can fit this drain pan in here. Should be able to. It's got two, uh, it's a 93 motor out of a Mustang. It's a 93 motor out of a Mustang and it uh, has a double sump pan. And uh, you see, let me grab some tools here and then do this. Uh, see if I can catch that front sump. This thing's pretty handy. Works pretty good. We'll see it makes less of a mess, but we'll see. I think that's uh, three quarter. Maybe, maybe bigger. Yeah, three quarter. I'll drain this front sump and then I'll drain the filter in, at this in, in this position, and I'll show you guys what I mean by a double sump pan. There she goes. Got a magnetic tip on this uh, plug. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we got any metal. Well, if you guys can see that. Little dirt, but I don't see any metal on this magnet. I don't see any chunks, anything big. I'll just have to see. Half inch 20 threads, and we shall see what we have. Not 
too much oil comes out of the front of that thing. Probably a quart maybe in the front. Probably about a quart in the front. Like that off. I'm going to be putting uh, probably a 347 store promoter in this. I'd like to do it before I go to Townsend in April for Supercell East. We'll see if I make it. And uh, I got a fuel injection system sitting here on the bench. And it'll bring a profile. We'll see if I can get all that on there before Townsend. I for sure want to get it in case I go back up to Moab next year or Colorado again. So I want to make sure I got a fresh motor in it by then. This one's okay with this part of the roll. I don't want to put a fuel injection on it until it's a little bit, a little bit healthier. I guess it probably doesn't hurt, but still want to, I always try to put a Fuel injection system on a clean motor if I can. Let's put this down here. We can get this oil filter off. It's one thing about working on these old cars, you guys, you can get to everything. O rings on there looks good. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. It's real purple. Pulled it heavy though. This is around a carburetor. It's pretty dirty. I had to jet it up to uh, change the jets and stuff to go out to Colorado because of the altitude. And uh, so I got a little rich, but uh, almost had to do it. Otherwise, it wouldn't run at all. Grab another oil filter. I guess, uh, yeah, it's pretty heavy. It's pretty stout. Good filter. Probably, I don't know who makes them for Mobile One. Didn't say on here. Looks like good quality though. It's probably Wix, one of those. Wix is usually pretty decent. Anyway, have been. All right, you guys, let me uh, get some oil here.
got um, this is VP Racing High Performance 2050. I run that in it now, mostly because I got it for free. But uh, seems to be pretty good. The motor doesn't tick, rattle, or do anything. It, it was burning a little when I first got it, a little bit. Not enough to file plugs or anything. But you want to make sure I don't uh, plan on, like I said, running this very long. This is my last batch of this type of oil, so. And then I'll, it'll all be real, real purple from here on out. Go ahead and Bear with me, man. I'm filling this filter up with oil. It's a bigger filter. On my small motors, I don't worry about it as much. On these bigger ones, bigger filters really got a lot more. Uh, they have a lot more got a little too much in it. A little too much in it, but or they have a lot more filter to fill before it pumps up and gets up to the cams and stuff. I try to put oil in the filter because there's about a, probably I don't know half three quarters of a quart inside this filter that's quite a bit you don't want that engine starving it's full it's going to probably spill a little but it should be okay in here Crazy, reach both hands up in there and put a filter on. Good old cars, boy. Like I said, this is a 92302 motor SVT running a uh, pretty much, I think it's about a 550 carb. It's a truck carburetor. It's got a high degree angle floats in it and stuff like that so that it, uh, it, it can uh, take a lot of high departure angles. Um, for off-road. Runs pretty good. Small dead spot in it. Right off of uh, idle. Otherwise everything it idles, runs, starts right up. Does everything it's supposed to do. And again we just uh, with most filters, you just hand tighten them. Make sure your hands are clean so you get a good grip on it. Make sure the filter's not dented or damaged in any way. And usually you're good to go. Let's see here. This back drain plug. Should still be three quarter. Yeah. bigger sump and I haven't ever been too happy with this rear drain plug one when I do the other motor I'm probably going to put a different pan on here a little fresher pan because this one this one hasn't ever been great it's always been a little sketchy making a mess this drain plug yeah, man, I don't know. It's got an O-ring on it. It's always been a little sketchy. I don't think I have another one. I think this was a replacement. I don't know. I don't like the look at the threads on this one. I might stop the camera and see if I can find it. I think I had another drain plug. See if I can find that. But uh, anyways, I'll catch you guys in a minute. Hang on. 
Okay guys, I'm back. Went ahead and uh, buttoned this up a little bit. Just cleaned off the, um, where the drain plug was for the front. That's the front sump, that's the rear sump that holds more fluid. And uh, it was probably down about a half a quart. This is a, a little magnet I keep there to catch anything that by the drain hole. I don't know, I, I'm curious if, when I pull the motor if that's collecting much. We'll see. I'll try not to blind you. But uh, yeah, in case you guys never saw the underside of this, uh, it's Dana 44 front end. Stiffened some. Not, not really any truss, just that bracket underneath the bottom. Get this out of the way because we're pretty much done with that. You guys don't let me forget to put oil in it when I get done. I let it on the ground because that wouldn't be good. Again, it'd be another bad thing. Almost like letting it fall off the lift. This is what the suspension's like on these things. They're pretty simple. Shock and a coil. It, uh, this is a three and a half inch lift with progressive brake springs. Um, that little tab holds it up there. There's a couple of nine sixteenths size bolts that hold it in there. I'm gonna snug them up before I put it back on the ground. These, these like some of the older vehicles have uh, Zerks to grease, so I'll grease them a little. And then uh, has a disconnectable sway bar. Soy bar was a big deal for this. It really made it handle good. It's a three to one steering instead of five to one like factory. It drives a lot better. Um, I put in an uh, adjustable track bar, which is what you see back here. And then uh, it's pretty much stock front end as far as tie rods and stuff. But I put in the heavier duty spring holders. And then uh, you can see it's quite a, <laughs> Quite a long spring, quite a long drop. That gives it articulation when you drop it. And you can see back here how Ford did these radius arms on these Broncos. I've got some bump stops, bigger ones, for this higher lift. I've got to put them on. And then, uh, but yeah, you can see where the radius arm's going. You can do longer ones and move them back a little. Just, <coughs> excuse me, more articulation. Meat and dust. Got a little oil there. I got to clean off that differential before I button it up. I got a mini high, high torque starter on it, headers, stock C4 training. Well, it's a Bronco C4 training. They have a little different sump in the bottom. You see that bump sticking down? That's kind of for off-road, but it also keeps hold down at the pickup. Bill Steen shocks on it, does pretty good. Got this little grills that cover the um, side of the motor and it's open. It lets it breathe a little better. Somebody had already cut out the fender well, so I just added these grills to it. And then this is uh, actually a, a Jeep bumper that I adapted to this, you know, don't tell anybody. And then I got my uh, front camera, a little Smitty Belt winch. I had a couple of these. Um, yeah, I like the Harbor Freight Badlands a lot, but I just had these because um, I was using them for trailer. I got one here that I stick out on this uh, 18 foot trailer, if I got to winch something up, I got a little receiver on the front of it. Might have showed you guys that before. I don't want to move you around a whole lot. It's got front disc brakes with Wildwood double piston calipers. And like I said, long tube headers on a pretty much a stock 302. The uh, other thing I got to work on, it's a tiny little bit of moisture coming off this transfer case. I had them put uh, new um, I got I rebuilt through a head drive shaft rebuilt. They're pretty stout. They seem to be holding up. It's got an electric speedometer, and then that high output uh, or heavy duty output on the Dana 20, and that's the weak point of a Dana 20. So I put a new one on there, beefed it up, and then added an electric speedometer to go with this Dakota Digital Dash. It uh, I did a lot of crazy stuff with it in Moab, and nothing hit. I just had this little tiny leak and it doesn't even really leave anything on the ground, but it's leaking. I think it needs a O-ring again on this and then a, the gasket there's leaking. And I run that Amsol 500,000 mile 50 weight in there and man, it, it's quiet, it really works well. And then uh, the uh, running seven degree C bushings on a three and a half inch lift, which gives it a uh, really good uh, um, road manners. 
And again, that's that Dana 20. And back here is the Ford 9H rear end. This thing's running 350 gears, Magnaflow exhaust. Sounds pretty good. Little 302. 11 leaf springs with overrider uh, axle wrap controllers. Show you that maybe how they tie in on the front spring hangers. And they seem to do okay. I mean, they survived brutal trails that we did out there in Moab and I don't get any axle wrap on it. It rides super good with these 11 leaf progressive rate springs. Then it has a 23 gallon tank and a protofab steel bumper. Works real well. She hit the ground a few times on this side and then uh, coming off of Hell's Gate, it hit here, which caused it to go up into the body a little bit. Let's see, what was the original paint? Can't tell. They probably got some Bondo in there though. And then the LED lights all the way around. And uh, yeah, the old beast, it does good. I mean, it's made to use. It's not, it's not here to uh, set. And then I did some, I got the transmission cooler up in here. You guys can see it, works pretty good there. And then uh, the shifter, it uh, comes around up here. I don't know if it, that's a good, I don't know, that's maybe not a good shot, but it comes around perfect. I can lay it straight on the, a plate that I built and it curves right around and it's dead smooth, really shifts well, no problems. As far as getting in and out of gear, and I run two or three fill, fuel filters on this thing because you do get moisture, dirt, stuff like that. It's got a whole new wiring harness. Just kind of showed you that. It's got one of those little flip up caps. It works pretty good for fuel. It's vented because these things, uh, eventually I'll have to put a vent in that tank and then get it set for fuel injection. Then all my lines, I don't think it's that hose right there, all my breathers from everything tee together and go all the way up up under the hood as high as I can get it so that it uh, no water can get in the crankcase, the transfer case, or the differentials, any of that stuff, or the transmission. It all breathes through a filter up there. But yeah, this is just kind of the bottom end overview. I'm gonna lower it down, put oil in it, probably wrap this up. Just, you know, just show you the underneath of it. I put a uh, Gen 3 alternator in 140 amp. It bolts into the stock place, a single wire alternator. Uh, V-belt driven because it just had V-belts on it. I could have put a serpentine system on it. I may do that when I put the other motor in. I may not. It works great. It's just two belts because I'm not running AC or anything on this little beast. And then, uh, yeah, it's just simple and durable and very strong. And uh, I mean, if you guys saw, there's a body mount, so it's a pretty high mount for these. It's mostly, that's a piece of billet with a piece of rubber under it, and it doesn't move. Um, but that gets the body up high enough so you can do the high lift. So all in all, it's about a seven or eight inch lift body and chassis. But that um, uh, being said, it, I, it with that short wheelbase, it's touched nothing in the, super rough, steep, crazy trails I went on. And then when I got back, I put on these KM3 BF Goodriches and they've been phenomenal on this thing. I mean, talk about quieting it down, riding so much better, smoother, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I figured you guys would get a kick out of that. I'm gonna wipe this differential off and uh, probably may do something with those leaks right now, but I think I'm gonna, I've gotta get my other pump to pump that transfer case back full if I drain it. And it's full now. I just checked it a little before I did the oil change and it's still full, so it ain't leaking. That's the only spot on this whole vehicle that leaks. And it's, uh, there's just nothing. It doesn't leave hardly anything on the floor, nothing, maybe a drop. And that's after it's run a while. But yeah, that's kind of the underneath of this girl. I've had, a, I showed a video of it uh, on the inside and uh, so I've kind of figured you guys, some of you guys might get a kick out of it. This um, piece right here is where it cracked. And it's because they never welded it originally. Right in here, they should have welded it. And I was gonna weld it, 
because these are a drop for your track bar because of the lift. And uh, I didn't. So when I was out in Hell's Revenge, uh, out on some of the trails out there, Moab, it cracked along where that bolt hole was. And it was moving a little bit, which would allow the body, the, the frame to move back and forth. So I went over to uh, Trailmater and they welded it up for me. Did a real good job. Charged about, you know, 7,500 bucks. They were real fair. And uh, cause it took a little while and uh, did a real good job. Smoothed it out. I'll walk back here. Don't want to bore you too much, but uh, um, on the other side, oh, let me see. This one's still there. Is this the one they did? I don't think this is. It might be the one they did. I don't think so. I think it's still the stock one. Let me go look. I almost wanted to say it was that side. Yeah, it was. They welded up. These things are only like welded here and here. So there's an opening up in here and it gets dirt in it. And it kind of rots these shock mounts. Well, coming out of <laughs> Hell's Gate, it really leaned over to the driver's side pretty good, swaying back and forth. I had the sway bar hooked up, which I probably should have unhooked. It might have helped it. And uh, it broke this rod here off of this. Um, and so I went to, had to go to 12 meter twice, once to get this welded. This was probably okay. I took shock off and didn't even notice the difference, but I had it welded fixed out there and they did a good job. And then uh, I went back two days later after we went over to Arches and I was driving around and it felt funny and had them fix that bracket. But for all of what we did and the crazy trails and the beating that we did to this vehicle, that was the only thing that happened was these two brackets. And I can see the ones in the back because they're original than this thing because it was was welded originally. This I use, I have onboard power, kind of neat. I plug it in um, and I have onboard uh, battery um, tender. And then also on the other side, on the passenger side over on the kick panel, um, I have an, uh, uh, 500 watt inverter convert 12 volt to a 110 use that for laptops use it for lighting use it for all different things but yeah so this is just an overview didn't want to bore you guys uh just wanted to show you the underneath of this old girl anyways i'll try to splice these together the oil change and the overview of the underneath of it and uh put it out there if you guys look at if anybody's interested but again thanks you guys for watching i'm going to drop this down fill it with oil i don't want to be distracted <laughs> And then uh, tomorrow, I'll see if we can get some video of uh, caffeine and octane with this old girl. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. See you later.